Hello everyone and welcome again. So my idea for the activation is I want to pick a frame. In this case, maybe this frame. Maybe, okay, we'll do this frame. And then say from this frame, I, I'm not gonna activate anything at this point. Could even maybe go here. Yeah, let's, let's stick to 550, uh, 150. So from this frame, I'm going to check if a piece has moved up too far from that position. Okay, if the geometry is transformed way, 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 uh, far away from this location, from 150, uh, from the location of frame 150, then that means it's probably above the ship and I'm going to activate it. So that's the way I'm going to do it. See, even this, for example, here, if I compare their position compared to this frame, there's a good distance. They traveled quite a bit. So they're a candidate to be activated and start falling. And that's what we're going to do. But we don't want it to do this process here. We want to do it on the, on the points. Okay, so these are the points we want to work with. So I'm going to create a point vop. And we need, we need the attribute, the position of 155, 150. So an easy way to do this is using a time shift, obviously frame 150 and then creating a rest attribute for that and here I'm going to say this is my rest attribute so it's the position of frame 150 is my rest attribute now if I dive inside I'm going to bind import bind import import the rest attribute it's a vector and then I'm going to compare or not compare I'm going to subtract the current position from the rest position and compute the length of that. So if I plug this in and then at frame zero it's black, nothing is there. And then if as I start moving, you see the things are things are changing color. And right now the different the length is showing up everything and we want to fit range that. I don't care if the piece moved just a a tiny bit so I'm gonna put down a fit range and say okay the minimum is going to be 2 and the maximum is going to be 5 for example so here see it's only activating those pieces and then as it goes up or as it moves away from that fr uh, frame it's getting activated so let's increase the color I want it to be a more aggressive so see, that is going to start activate and then as things go up, they're going to activate or as long as they get away from, from that position, they go in, uh, they're going to activate. So this is my control and then I'm going to create a, I'm going to copy the same sub solver because right now it's not accumulating. If a piece goes up, for example, and then falls down, it will go back, it will lose the color, it will go back to black which means it's going to remove it from the group and we don't want that we want to accumulate the colors so let's uh, let's go up here and I'm going to copy the same sub solver and we want to accumulate everything starting from frame 1 we'll start from frame 1 doesn't matter and I'm going to switch because I don't want anything here so I'm gonna switch between the the black version and the one where it's working after frame 150 so that way we have one second let me let me write this expression Let's see it the way okay so it's if we cache it now in the sub solver the first 150 frames is, go is going to stay black and then as it falls down reaches that frame it's going to start calculating and that's our activation and everything is going to stay uh, white okay so we have the activation I'm going to create a wrangle node same here 
if the color is above 0.4 I'm gonna say active equals 0 and active is going to become 1 and that's what we're going to pass onto the geometry okay we are good so let's copy this information onto the mesh like we did here and it's going to use the name attribute same but instead we're going to copy the active attribute so now our pieces uh, no we're going to sorry we're going to do it after because we don't want the uprez to happen every frame so we're going to do it uh, after we catch the geometry we're gonna copy that information back onto it so let me file save this by cache I'm gonna call this temp uprez live So we have the name attribute still available for us and then we're going to copy so let's object merge this so I don't create a long wire and I'm just going to copy the activation here so the active attribute is there and then we're going to copy it invalid specification let's see we have oh okay so the name uh, the activation needs to happen after we pack the geometry so I'm gonna assemble this I don't want to create a name attribute I'm gonna just pack this geometry and now we we have points and we're gonna copy the active attribute to them and that's gonna work so see there's only four active mm, shouldn't be four active is it only showing four pieces hmm. I'm not so sure so eight unique oh yes so the name sorry the name attribute after the Voronoi is not correct so we need to generate it again I'm going to use a uh, assemble node. It's going to create the the name. I'm going to call this uprez. Okay. So now we have a name attribute and then we want to transfer that we want to create to pack the geometry, but we don't want the name attribute the new one. We want the old one. So I'm also going to transfer the name underscore base and this is how you copy primitive attributes onto the uh, onto the geometry uh, let's do one more thing sorry I'm gonna create uh, I'm gonna promote that uh, base name so name underscore base from primitive onto points I'm gonna change this to first match and then here I'm gonna it's gonna be points now so that's that's the attribute I'm looking for I'm gonna do the same thing here again and now when I copy the uh, active attribute is gonna copy correctly no it did not okay, let's see so we have an active attribute and sorry it's going to use the name base okay it's working so I'm gonna re-explain this again and hopefully it's not too confusing like the first time so w after we did the fracturing of the pieces okay the name attribute that we get from here is the same every piece that we fracture is going to get the same name attribute so we need to fix that we need to uh, name these ge this geometry correctly so we did that using an assemble and now we have a name attribute this is the final information needed on the mesh 
but we also need to maintain that name underscore base because that's the one w the points are going to look for to transform the geometry and uh, and to be able to copy it or transform it transfer it into the points it needs to be a point attribute okay so that's why i promoted it here and now my points my pack geometry have a unique name attribute that's the one the new uprise is going to use and then they have the name underscore base which is the one we're going to use here so if i do the transform it still works and this geometry is packed and it has an active attribute copied onto it so we fix the name attribute i trans uh, promote the name base because it has to be point if we wanted to maintain it with the packed primitives and then I'm going to copy the active attribute, which relies on the name base, because this is uh, coming from here. I use the same wrangle to rename or make a copy of the name attribute called base so that we they match. And same here, this is for the transformation. And we could do the same operation uh, once. It, I don't need two points, so actually that. So we copy and then we transform. And now we have a geometry that is uh, uh, that trans transitions from active equals zero to active equal one automatically. And now if we plug this into a, sol sol a RBD bullet solver, and I'm gonna start it at frame 150 because that's what I want. I don't care about anything else before this. Everything is active equals zero. So I'm going to st set the start frame to be, where is it? Where is the start frame? Yeah, here. So 150. And let's go. So if we hit play, we should see it match. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to do, I'm going to go under the solver. and uh, we need to okay so I'm not gonna do it in this video I'm gonna say only read the active attribute and it's not going to work because we have to we have to set few more things you see now it became active and it start falling but it didn't it didn't inherit that the movement from the original uh, RBD it only stayed at frame 150 and then as the pieces started activating it started falling so we need to trans tell uh, the bullet solver that it needs to keep moving the pieces okay and then when they become active it activates them but it doesn't inherit any movement anymore so that's what we're going to do in the next video thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit